we're hearing reports of inside that it's very, very bad at the moment. We managed to slip out last night during a pause in the bombardment. And we talked to people there this morning, the people we were staying with, and they say it is heavier now over the past couple of hours than at any point over these past several days. They say it is the worst so far. There are a lot of claims flying about about casualties uh, in quite high numbers. Uh, but the people we're staying with, local journalists, incredibly brave, who went out every single day that I was there, at, at times when we thought it was too dangerous to go out, they say it is too dangerous for them to go out and check the numbers we're hearing about the dead. Uh, they say the impacts are falling constantly. Um, it is the worst day so far, they say. This is five days uh, we're going into, Paul. What is the state of Homs? I mean, in terms of level of deterioration, even over these five days? Uh, you have to drop a lot of artillery on a place to flatten it uh, completely. Uh, it, it's not that, but you drive around and you see a lot of shell holes. Um, sometimes they're not using uh, heavy shells, sometimes they're using airburst mortars, presumably to, to cause the, uh, the biggest casualties. It's not clear what they're aiming at. Um, the Free Army, as it's called, are, are numerically not very strong. They are mostly hiding out in high houses the same as everybody else, and I'm not sure what the Syrian army's intention is, but certainly there's civilians who are bearing the brunt of this. Um, what people fear, of course, is a ground invasion. That doesn't seem to be happening at the moment, but the ground troops are very close, and ground forces are very close. Um, there were tanks, uh, or there were tanks yesterday, about 800 metres away at one point, and only 400 metres away at another point um, from this particular part of Homs that we were staying in. Not moving forward, but using their heavy machine guns to pour fire um, into those areas, adding to the shell fire with this heavy machine gun fire. We, we heard that for several hours during the day yesterday. Paul, difficult for you to second guess, obviously, what the military might be planning to do day by day. But do you think that the snipers in the centre of the city are having any impact in terms of keeping the military at bay? Uh, it's, it's pretty futile, I think. Um, when these uh, attacks started, we heard a lot of fire, which I think literally was a gesture of of defiance and nothing more. And then the leadership of the Free Army, as they called themselves, gave an order for people to preserve their ammunition. They did try to carry out a counterattack two days ago. Um, we didn't witness it. Um, they said they lost two of their men in that counterattack, and they believe they did keep some of the, uh, the armoured vehicles at bay. But I spoke yesterday to um, a colonel, a full colonel. He only defected one week ago from the official security forces who said um, that basically their strategy is to hope that the army will crumble from the inside. He said um, people know they're killing civilians and they want this bloodbath to stop. But that, in, in a way, is a pretty slim hope, especially as we're hearing unconfirmed rumours that special troops uh, more loyal to the regime, more loyal to the president, have been moved up. And if the Free Army is hoping that uh, people like them, uh, who, they're all deserters, army deserters, will, will tip the balance, there's no sign of that at the moment. And I presume there's no sign of any belief whatsoever anymore, Paul, is uh, in what President Assad might say about his commitment to bringing violence to an end. We well, you know at the start of these demonstrations, and this uprising is almost a year old now, um, people were calling on President Assad to bring in reform. In places like Homs or the parts of Homs that I've been in, you know, that, that call has long changed to a demand for him simply to resign. Um, people, um, you know think that he's a war criminal. Uh, one woman said to me, uh, I've given up hope that we're going to get help from the outside world, but it doesn't matter because God will bring vengeance down on President Assad. Um, people are very bitter uh, and uh, almost despairing, really. I, I suppose the one word I've used to sum up the mood as we left last night was despair. They don't think anybody's coming to help and they don't know what to do.